Hey guys, what's happening? So, my wife brought me this to me the other day, and she said the, the remote stopped working. It's a Samsung remote, and it's actually a pretty expensive remote. And, yeah, this must have just happened, I don't know, because we were using the remote. I don't know if this happened, like, overnight, but take a look at that. So, I thought I'd show you... All right, this stuff is sort of toxic. It's, it's potassium uh, hydroxide. And, I mean, it's not as bad as, like, sulfuric acid, like a lead acid battery, but i got to clean this up. And the good thing is I, I got this before it actually started corroding the contacts. That's typically what I do is I'll corrode the contacts. So there's a couple different ways you can neutralize this. Um, you can use, like, vinegar or lemon juice. or. Um, but on this side, I'm just going to wash it off in my uh, sink here. And then on this side, I'm going to spray some neutralizer on it. And then I'm going to hit it with my air compressor and then try to get as much of this other stuff off as possible. I don't really want to dip this side in non water. You know, obviously I don't want to create more corrosion internally on the, on the board. The lead, or the synthetic lead. Alright, so one of the things I use to neutralize acid, this is actually for car batteries. Uh, it's supposed to turn pink when you hit sulfuric acid, but it also works on this potassium hydroxide. It's not going to turn pink, but like I said, first time I blow this off my air compressor, obviously out of my, not towards my face, just to get the rest of the stuff off. And then, uh, like I said, you could also use uh, vinegar. But uh, the thing with vinegar is it can actually corrode the other metal. So that's why I'm trying to get this off. I, I don't want to, you know, vinegar in itself is corrosive. So it's good for removing rust and stuff, but it's also, it will take off this plating. All right, so I'm going to spray all this Noco stuff on there. And you can already see that it's a little corroded than the contact already. It takes away the plating. So that's what I want to focus on. I'm going to wait this to come back for a few minutes, or let this kick in for a couple minutes. And then we'll come back and wipe everything off. Alright, now that it's been soaking for a few minutes, got some Q-tips, and then just wipe this off. The thing that works actually well too is WD-40 to prevent corrosion. Yeah, you can see it's, you know, you can see it's not shiny like this other piece of metal over here. It's already set a little bit, but it should be fine as long as we neutralize it to prevent it to keep on going. Okay, we'll try it out, see if it works. Thanks for measure. I'm going to put a little trifle on here, just as a precaution. And you can use a spray, WD-40, anything that with like a petroleum distillate. Let's take this out. So a couple new AA batteries. Alright, so first shot, no go with the battery. It's not working still. So even with new batteries cleaned up, so the corrosion might have got inside the remote. So I gotta take the remote apart here and see if I can figure it out. Alright, so I'm gonna take the power test. I wanna make sure that this thing is actually getting contact and power. So negative. Alright, so I'm getting three two point two volts. So I know that they actually this back lead is working fine. <clears throat> so I gotta see if we're getting power up inside the remote now. Alright, so I'm taking a look at the uh, on here. You can still see some of the stuff that's sprayed in there. Got a little bit into the PCB area, but. Okay, so I gotta start looking at this PCB. So, what I wanna do is trace the leads, the power leads, and see if it's actually going up where it needs to go. On this side. I'm gonna look at just a couple leads, a cap, an IC, and, a, and an emitter. So now I want to make sure we got good contact past the points, past these leads, and then let's take a look. They should be like right here and here. Yep, we're getting 3.2 volts to the board, so in the contact is good. This is the actual power switch right here, and it's just a little clicking mechanism. Test it real fast. Alright, I've done, done a lot of tracing and I'm getting voltage to the IC. And uh, let me show you some. I'm going to hook up my multimeter to this uh, the emitter here and hopefully you can get that on there. I'm going to hook a button up. You can see the volt state change as I hit that. So I know, I know it's doing something. 
So every time I hit the button, see that the volt goes up, the millivolts. So I know it's sending something, but the power button doesn't seem to want to do anything when I do the power button. So maybe the power button was just bad, I don't know. A little bit, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm not sure if you saw that, but I have it hooked up to my, uh, my bent supply, 3.2 volt, which is basically uh, two double A's in a series. All right, all right, so I measured this with my cap tester, that main cap, uh, definitely tests fine. 47 microfarad, and this thing shows uh, it's 49. So, we're in range for that, the cap is fine. So is the IC bad? What's up? I'll show you guys a little trick. Your eye can't pick up the emitter, but the camera will, the digital camera will. See that? So I can tell it's emitting something. Yeah, your, your, your eye won't be able to pick that up. So if you look into it, you won't see that, but if you have it on a digital camera, it will work. All right, this is very odd about this thing. It's kind of intermittent. It works for a second, then it stops working. So I'm gonna take my soldering iron, and I'm gonna just hit all, this, all the pads down here. I've already tested the cap. That's fine, so... Alright. Like I said, I'm just going to go through all these little contact points with my soldering iron. Make sure we're getting good contact. Hmm, cool. Got some signal again. Like I said, it's intermittent, man. So it was. When I put the remote back together, it didn't work, so... Put back together and see if it works. Alright, let's try this thing out. go. Awesome. Yeah, so I think the trick was just reflowing the solder joints. So, yeah, cool. Back in business.